Hello and welcome to Emma Learns Wine, where we will learn about wine and also drink some too. Today, um, for the first ever episode, we have decided to try some absolute new wines. I've never tried these wines before, so let's give it a go. So before this, we were discussing which wines to try first. Do we start with the white or the red when you're doing a tasting? And we decided to go with the white first because it's a bit lighter. I don't know if this is the correct way or not. So let's give it a go. I'm going to try and open it now with really bad bottle opening skills. Oh, there's not a little, you know, a little thing that takes off the top. There isn't that bit that takes off the top. So this is even going to be worse than we imagined. <laughs> I might have to stand up. Let's stand up. I can only use this type of <laughs> corkscrew. I can't use the ones they have in pubs and stuff. It's just not. Is it going to go? There we go. Right, so I have some notes here. Um, so about how to how to taste the wine, how to look, smell, and taste the wine, and um, some information about the wine itself. Um, so this wine is from Portugal. Um, Portugal is, as everybody should know, is a very famous region for wine. Um, I think I've never had any white wine from Portugal before. I've only ever had red. Um, so let's pour some. I was making this bloody sound. How much is a good amount to taste, do you think? Is that probably a good amount? I don't know, maybe a little bit more. We'll go with a little bit more. Why not? Why not? We're pushing the boat out today because it's the first episode. And so the, first, the notes first say to look at the wine. So, it's white. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the best thing I've got going with that. That's why I've got notes, because usually I do smell wine when I buy that. Like, the, fir the first time we try a wine, I do smell it. But do I know what to look at? As long as it's got no bits floating in it, that's usually okay for me. And so it says to... Hold it against a piece of white paper. So I suppose use the notes to look at that. Um, it should have a, a sort of tinge of green, yellow, golden or brown for white wine. So Tinges of yellow. <laughs> I feel so silly doing this. Um, it's all part of the learning curve um, at the end of the day. Um, I can see through it, there's no sediment in it. I know about sediment because I tried to make my own wine once. And it was like 50-50 if it went okay or not. Um, and now smelling. Um, so the... Let's smell it. Mm. It smells like wine to me, to be honest. I don't get any particular notes from that. <laughs> um... But it, I suppose if you smell it, you make sure that it's not off. I suppose that's why they make you check the wine when you're at a fancy restaurant. Um, but there's nothing from smelling it. I don't pick up any particular notes or flavours from smelling it. Um, and then the taste. So it says here how to taste with some wine in your mouth, purse your lips together as if you were going to whistle. Well, I can't whistle, so that will be interesting. Um, draw air sharply inwards, close your lips and swirl the wine around your mouth. This might make a mess, to be honest. <laughs> I tell you what though, having that breath of air into the mouth, when you have the wine in your mouth, you do taste more flavours than you would usually do when you just drink the wine. But I can't really describe the flavours, which is awful for this sort of a wine vlog sort of thing. But 
Uh, there, there is like a sort of sweet caramelly note there. Oh no, I tell you what, it does remind me of. It's kind of I really, really love elderflower and things with elderflower in, and I get that sort of floral notes when I breathe the air in. Um, but all in all, not too bad. Mm. Yeah, now the way that I usually drink it makes me go, hmm, yes, I do like that wine. Rather than being pedantic about it and you're trying to think more in depth to it, um, it's harder to taste it when you're thinking about, oh, I really need to do this and I really need to do that. Um, so let's, um, let's learn a bit more about that wine now that we've tasted it. So I've got some very fancy looking notes here. Um, I'm not going to go through all of it because that will bore you. Um, but it's very interesting to have a white wine from Portugal. Um, and I suppose they do all sort of wines there, but I've always had only red and rosé from there. Um, so let's see what the um, what the notes are about it compared to what I think about it. So the first impressions are tropical mango and lychee with a soft fall fill. Is it mango -y? I thought it was more flowery. Let's try another bit just to make sure. I don't know, I still don't get that mango, but I perhaps I do taste a bit of the lychee. I have had lychee before, and to try it by itself. Um, it says there's a lot of creaminess coming across, so you can really notice the leaves aging. So I suppose the lychee is like the forefront of flavour for this wine. Um, and then there's a certain type of grape that it says that adds a tiny spice to it and some real interest. So I can't pronounce this type of grape and oh, it's going to be really embarrassing to um, to pronounce it, but I will do anyway. And then you can you can make fun of me in the comments. It's fine. So there's four types of grapes in this wine. So it's Sauvignon Blanc, which is my go to sort of wine to drink. Um, every day. A grape called Videlio or Vidello, which I don't know anything about. Chardonnay, um, I don't usually go for Chardonnay wines, um, but it's also a very well known one. And then the last one, which I know I'm going to laugh when I say it, the last one, <laughs> let's see, I'm laughing already, is Go Wits <laughs> <laughs> is Gowitz Tramina, I've never heard of this type of grape before, the Gowitz Tramina grape. Um, I'm probably saying that very, very wrong, so apologies for that. Um, but that is the one that's adding a spice to it. And I suppose it's a, yeah, I think it's quite spicy for a white wine. So, hmm, there is like a, the more I drink it, the more I taste the spice. At first I thought it was floral, but actually it's very deep. But overall, to try another white wine, because I always buy Sauvignon Blanc when I buy white wines. I, I don't usually buy anything else, really. Um, I do really enjoy this one. So, cheers. So now let's talk about palate cleansers. So, uh, when I was googling palate cleansers, the main, the first thing that came up was bread, um, between the white and the red. Um, so my first thought was water, but I suppose the water doesn't really drain the flavours away from your mouth. So I've got some uh, water and I've got some crackers, um, just to um, cleanse my palate. Um, I suppose it's something you might have as a snack at the pub as well if you have crisps or something like that if you're out and about you can use that as well um, just before we go on to the red wine um, so yeah I quite enjoyed that white wine it just 
even though it felt like a dry white wine, it was still a lot different to the white wine I usually drink. Mm, usually, usually when I drink wine, I always stick to something that's always the same grape. Like I've always been really against blends of grapes. It has to be the one specific grape. So to have a wine with so many different types of grape in was a, a really good experience. And I did really enjoy it. It was really good. Right, let's now go on um, to the red wine, which I am particularly excited to try. It is a wine from Bulgaria, and I have never had any wine from Bulgaria at all. I've never even thought of Bulgaria as a place that would produce wines. Um, when you think about wine, you think of France and Italy. Um, I have started to dabble in English wines as well, but we'll get into that in a few episodes down the line. So I am very excited to try this one. It is I've only got one sort of grape in it as well called Ruin. Or Ruin? I'm not sure that if anything I'm saying is wrong, please say in the comments below um, how you actually say it because we're not sure either. So this is a, a two year old um, red wine. Also, it's a cork as well. And it doesn't have one of those things. Um, so let's see if I can open it. I'm going to have to stand up again. Now then, after we've done this, we will go through the same process we did with the last one. Uh, with the uh, looking and the smelling and the tasting. Obviously, this is going to be completely different to the last one. Obviously, this is going to take a moment. Is that all the way? Or maybe just a little bit more? We'll see what that does. Mm, I think maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that should do it. Oh, oh, I didn't pop as nicely as the last one. That's disappointing. Right, let's have a look at this one. Um, fresh glass. Let's have a look. It looks like a very light red wine. Looking at it, it looks like a light red wine. It doesn't look too heavy, like sometimes they're very dark and clarity. Um, so let's. No, but it's still quite a dark red wine, but looking at it from this sort of angle, you can just about see through the wine. So let's um, give it a smell. Oh, that smells like wine I've had before. I can't remember what it reminds me of. It kind of, to me, smells a bit like a, um, a bit like a Merlot. But don't quote me on this because I have no idea about the differences between grapes and stuff so far obviously this is the first episode um but it smells it does smell very um inviting and smell definitely smells like wine i've drunk before so let's have a taste Mm, there's definitely some sort of fruit in there, maybe blackberry or something. Mm. 
even though it looks light, it doesn't really taste light. It's light. It's really hard to describe, but it is really nice. It's one of those wines that you wouldn't. Um, it's more of, to me, it's a wine that tastes like you would have at a meal rather than, or maybe with a sort of a cheese board sort of type wine, rather than just having a bottle of by itself. It does feel quite heavy on the palate. But it is really nice. So let's find out. Let's find out a little bit more about this wine from the notes, um, and see how close I was with what my thinkings were. So the um, impressions are velvety fruits without being overpowering, blackberries, raspberries, and vanilla, turning into sweet dried fruits. A lovely, supple, rounded wine. To be honest, I don't think you could get any better than that sort of description for this sort of wine. I can, like I said about the blackberries and fruity sort of taste from it. Um, I'm not sure about the vanilla. I think it's like very, very subtle sweetness. It's quite tart. Oh no, not tart. I'm, uh, do you know what? I'm, I'm so bad at describing things. Um, but... I'm for, for a wine from a country I never even thought to produce wine. Well, I suppose they should have, they must produce their own wine, but it's not up there with the wines of the world. Mm. And it's very nice. But I think that the bigger question is, which one do I prefer? And I understand that like, I've chosen for this episode two completely different wines, but it's just the beginning. It, like, and it, to choose the red and the white together made more sense to me to, to choose wines that were completely different to compare them. But I don't know when. When I was a bit younger, I used to drink more reds, and I don't really drink a lot of red wine now. I think when I was younger, I didn't like white wines at all. And now white wines, I drink more than anything else, even more than spirits or anything like that. White wine is my go-to drink. But I do actually think I prefer the white wine in this instance. I think it's like the white wine here out of these two wines, it's so unique compared to other wines that I've had before. The mixture of the wines, the grapes that they've used, um, really brings out the mixture of flavours and that, that I'm not really used to from white wine. And then the red wine, the red wine is nice, like. Obviously, it's not going to be awful, but the to me, they're in this uh, wine discovery that I want to go through. There's nothing new and unique I see there about it. So I think out of these two, personally, I prefer the white one, but the red one is also really nice. If like the white wine to me would be one that I could um, just drink to have a drink. The red wine is to me is much more suited to have with a meal. Um, heavy and luxurious and warming when the white wine, the, the tastes of it just by itself is just more unique to my palate right now. So I think I'd go for this one. So the white wine, um, as you can see here, is um, Val de Lobos, even though that's probably a terrible way to say that. That's from Portugal. That's my favorite one from this episode. And then the red wine is called Aigio. I'm gonna, probably not that, but that's what I'm gonna say right now. 
that is from Bulgaria um, and although it's a really nice wine I do prefer the Portuguese wine in this instance so that's the winner so this is the first ever episode of Emma Learns Wine obviously there's going to be some teething to go on and some editing to go on um, but all I want to say to you guys is please press the subscribe button that would be really good and I hope you all had as fun as, as I hope you all have as, mu as much fun as I have if you've got any suggestions for any wines I should be trying on this channel please comment down below and hopefully we'll see you next time cheers <laughs>